Okay, when you first boot up your console for the first time, you've taken out of the box this lovely shiny new thing and you need to start getting it ready for your venue, there's a couple of things that you should probably set up that will define how it's used uh, from that day forward. And uh, I'm going to jump into a little section under S3 which says Hardware Setup. And if I click on Hardware Setup, uh, a window will appear now I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go through everything that's in this section, I'm going to go through the key things that you need to do right now to get your console working. So for the time being we're going to ignore S7 priority. Um, just so you know S7, yes I can go and hit uh, one of the function keys and it would change uh, what we're looking at. So the next one down which is S8, if I actually hit S8 on the console it'll jump to that. Now. A, B, A slash B and C slash D, uh, you do have to do something in here. My console only has one go button. A Palette Classic has two go buttons. Uh, so I only have the A, B uh, slider to worry about. Others might have an A, B and a C, D uh, fader to worry about. So what I suggest you do, what I do with this thing, is I actually set it to be an AB split crossfader. And what that means is, um, if we just have a look at what the desk is doing, uh, these two faders here, as they fade up and down, that will actually uh, transition the, the cues from one cue to the next cue and next cue to the next cue. Um, back on the screen you can see um, we have a range of options here. Um, the first one relates to preset AB2 scene master ref refers to if you actually have a preset console which I don't have in front of me at the moment so I don't really want to see that option. Uh, Q list AB, PB master and crossfader. That's actually quite useful because what it does is it makes one fader uh, a, a, like a grand master for the Q list and the other fader a crossfader. So some people might want to use that, particularly people that come from uh, hog land and that sort of thing because that's, that's kind of the way that hogs work. More traditional theatrical people will use the split crossfader. Um, the rest of the options in there uh, refer to um, how you can control uh, various different banks of looks and, and, and slider wings and, and things like that. Uh, I dare say that 99 times out of, a out of 100 people are going to ignore that. Uh, some people will use it, I'm sure, and uh, uh, really that's not me. The CD slider, uh, obviously I don't have one on this console so I'll leave that disabled. But uh, can I recommend that whatever you do on the AB, do it on the CD fader because then you won't be confusing people by a different operation of different faders on your console in your venue. Okay, so that's AB and CD. Grandmasters, again, uh, uh, on this particular console, I have, uh, if you have a look at the console itself, I've got these two buttons up here that say DBOA and DBOB. And I can set those to um, uh, black out uh, conventional fixtures and moving light fixtures or everything and they could be toggle and moment momentary and all the rest of that. Uh, wonderful feature, I'm going to turn it off because really uh, I would prefer to not have a button on my um, console that basically makes all the lights go to black if I accidentally brush past it. So for, for my purposes I'm going to turn it off. You may want to do something else. The fourth option there, button array. Uh, we'll play in detail in here a bit later but it's to do with um, the palettes and, and how, how the 25 or 100 button array um, records and plays back its information. So I won't go into detail with that one right now. Uh, triggers is important if you have a light palette because it has the ability to take an external GPI trigger and, and make things happen based on what's happening with those. So again, not really useful for my console here. Uh, and finally, S12 console. Now, this has some really important stuff that you do need to pay attention to. Uh, the first one is hold delta levels, S4. This one... Um, on the Strand 500, if you grab some lights and you put them at 100% and then you hit go to transition to the next queue, it would take control of those lights and, and uh, do whatever it is they need to do to them so that the next queue is fully up. So it might fade them out, it might fade them to a new level, whatever. 
So what this checkbox does is it allows you to optionally switch on and switch off that function. So if you don't have a checkbox there, when you hit go, it won't hold the changed levels, delta means change, it won't hold the changed levels as you transition from Q to Q. If you do check it, it will hold it. I would suggest that having it checked while you are plotting your show is probably wise and then unchecking it while you're running your show so that in the middle of your show you can grab a light, take it to a level and know that it's going to fade out at the next queue. The other thing that is worth checking out in this section is the level entry mode. Now a lot of uh, 300 and 500 users uh, certainly the ones I've met and dealt with will be playing in either single digit entry or two digit entry as opposed to uh, using the enter key which is that top option which I've got selected there. I'm going to leave it on enter key and the reason for that will become apparent a little bit later uh, because it allows you to do some functions that you can't really get easy access to any other way. So I'm going to leave that as, as use enter key um, the other thing you may need to play with, depending on the other um, products you have in your, uh, in your venue, is USB DMX flavour. And effectively that just changes the type of uh, speed that the, um, the DMX is flowing out of the console, out of the ports on the console. Uh, the default is 31 hertz, and that's exactly where I'm going to leave it because that seems to work for this venue quite happily. Finally, console personality. For those that have used uh, a Genius Pro or Light Palette um, old console, this gives you the familiarity of the same colour schemes that um, those particular consoles have. If you happen to be using this console on a, uh, just a straight laptop computer using the, um, the Windows interface, they've given you a special user interface for that. And what that one does is it gives you more dialogue boxes to, to be able to choose things. It makes it a much easier console to use without the control interface. Okay, for me, I'm leaving that on Genius Pro. And that uh, takes care of hardware setup.